and thanks for joining us for today's episode of Feng Shui It. We have an amazing guest in the studio today, Jamin Van Dillen, and we're going to talk about some amazing work that he's doing uh, with music and with sound. But before we get started on that, I want you to make sure and hit that subscribe button. That way you can always make sure you get updates and any videos that we release so that you can live your best version of you. All right. So thank you so much for coming into the studio today and talking with me. Um, I have been quite a fan of yours since I received my beats. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I'm, I'm jumping ahead because I'm so excited about my product. Um, but we're gonna first start off by talking about your background. Um, because I feel like your background really sets the tone for what it is that you do now. And it kind of explains how you got to this point in your career. So welcome and let's get started. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. So tell me about your background. How in the world did you get started in music in the first place? Like where did music come into your life or was there ever a time in your life you didn't know music? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, I think it, for me, it really, it really started when I was at a very young age. My, my father was a musician. He was an incredible musician. He could pick up any instrument, play anything. So there was always music around me. And then by the time I kind of, I can really clearly remember my first my first experience with music where it like really struck me was actually when I was about five years old, I purchased a CD of uh, Johnny Mathis. I don't, I don't know if you know who that is, but he's an <laughs> older artist. And he, the music he sings is about, it's typically like sad and about heartbreak. And I remember listening to it at five years old alone and crying and just really like connecting emotionally and, and feeling that resonance from the music. And then with my father around, I was, you know, just kind of surrounded by, it. I, I would kind of mimic my father and he'd play something and I'd play it on the piano and just would pick up stuff. But I, I never really had the desire to play music like he did until I was older. But I always look up to my father. I, I loved him so much and he would, he'd come home and I'd always want to hang out with him, but he would come home and he had a stressful job and he'd go straight into playing music and when that was like his release. So. I was like bummed, but I like respected that he did that. And so I kind of started to create this love for music. And then I just, I enjoyed also, like I loved rock. I love, you know, Michael Jackson, funk. Like my brother started DJing when he was about 12 years old. Oh, wow. And that's when I got, you know, introduced to soul music, funk, hip hop, uh, rock, dance. So I, I just had this kind of like very eclectic taste at a very young age. And I just always would so connect with um, the emotion behind it. And so, you know, later on when I was about 12, my parents divorced and it was really traumatic for me. Um, and as I got older, I hardly saw my father at all. And I slowly started to get into playing the drums. And so by the time I was 17, I was like just started playing it. And then my father, um, he, he had throat cancer. And then later on, I found out that it like transferred to his lungs and he was doing really bad. And so one day I was in school and I got this phone call and I just, I knew something was wrong. Like it was just very strange. And it was a phone call from my mother and um, she, you know, like the teacher said like, you know, pack up your stuff, you're gonna be going home. So I, I just like, my heart was like pounding and I, I walked out to the front of my school and I see my, my older brother and my mother in my brother's car. And so we drove to go see my father. And that was the last time I ever saw him because he, he died right in front of us. And um, yeah, it was just it was just like it was really hard for me. But the way after that, I kind of dealt with with the emotions was to play music because I could kind of channel things through. And it was like like my way of connecting with my father. So I started playing drums and I was at the time in high school and kind of went from this transition from going from the popular crowd to like listening to heavy metal and like, you know, screw the system type thing. So I could get out this angst. And so I just kept playing drums. And then uh, my brother was always into hip hop and he started producing music on, on a, on a MPC with these pads. And I was so much into the instrumentation piece of it where I, I looked at that, I looked down upon that and I was like, ah, oh, it's cool. But I was like, whatever, right. like, I want to play a real I'm instrument. I'm a real musician, right? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I would I would kind of poo poo it a little bit. Um, but then he he kind of slowly transitioned from the MPC, the, the actual like unit to computer software. And that's when, like one time I went over to my brother's house and I was like, 
just blown away by it and it like really sucked me in and I, I just I loved it like the first song I wrote was a, a, a techno song and um, and it was great because I can make music whenever I wanted to and I didn't I didn't have to like the band I'd have a, a jealous girlfriend that was like you always go to band practice you know and then and then I would have I'd be breaking up a fist fight between the guitar player and the bass player right, and I was right. like I was like the computer doesn't argue with me or anything this is amazing I can just so, make music yeah so I could just make music and so I, I I just I loved it and it just like it was just like my life so I just started playing music and doing all these fun things and never really thought anything of it it was just like kind of a hobby and um you know I had I had an old high school friend that was really into music and we it was kind of our way of bonding and I just yeah I loved it and then slowly I started getting these opportunities to just I'd be in the right place at the right time and I, I would be at a restaurant and Warren G was there and the I knew the owner and the owner was like yeah do you want to sit next to him and I'm sitting next to Warren G eating a plate of lasagna wow. so just things like that kept happening and so slowly you know it was like I would befriend them and I would you know give them my CDs or my music and before I knew it you know I'm like on a tour bus with Wu-Tang and just oh, wow. crazy stuff was was transpiring and I had opportunities and um, you know it just kind of just started really unfolding like organically and all the while you know like I, I I was doing it, but there's still like this kind of like empty piece inside of me that I was like kind of trying to fill with like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool now. Like, you know, my manager connected a deal and I'm writing a song for Britney Spears now and Nicki Minaj, but it was like, there was still this kind of like egoic piece and it just was like, there was some emptiness. And the deeper I got into it, you know, I get a call up from a, you know, like a big name rapper and I show up to the studio and it's like, like literally like like I feel like I'm on gang territory because there's like literally a gang there right right and I'm like really uncomfortable and they're there and they're like they're like they're like where are you from blood like they're punking me right I'm like I was like I'm like I'm, from, I'm like from Orange County California like white collar I'm like uh like I'm like scared I just want to make music yeah and so you know it's just funny so I I'd, I'd put on my music then all of a sudden they're like they're like damn son and they like would give me props and it was cool but it would, I'd be surrounded by drugs and like gang activity and they'd be degrading women and just stuff and it just it's like it just kind of starts to consume you the more you're around it and so it just was like it was hard on my soul you know and so I just I didn't like it and I, I was getting more into my spiritual side and and the personal development piece which really helped free me to kind of see past that and then you know kind of just trust and like, all right, like I built this all up and now I have to like walk away into something completely new that like, I'm like scared shitless. Like it's like you, you know something your whole life and now you're like going into something where people, you know, think you're weird or it's frowned upon or society thinks it's, you know, not right. 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 So I just made this decision to move to LA, to move from LA and kind of like walk away. And I had this other deal that was set that would like really take care of me for the rest of my life. And and it was with good people too, but I, I just something wasn't in alignment for me. So it was like I put all that behind, and um, and I moved to North Carolina, and I started. Um, I I lived in this loft right by this river, and I would be going out to the river, and I'd be doing these meditations, and it was just strange, like like. I would like literally like lay like there would be a rock submerged in the river and I'd lay on the rock and like dip my head back and it was almost like I was being baptized or like it's it's hard to describe but as I started doing that I just started getting these weird ideas to like mess around with frequencies and like study binaural beats and and then I was studying um, in that process I started studying like ancient cultures and old tribes from thousands of years ago and I just started realizing that like music and rhythms and stuff come from these ancient cultures and right. they did it for a specific reason for like healing. Very calculated. And, yeah, like getting into states and stuff like that. So I just started messing around with it and that's kind of how I came about doing this. And it just opened up this world and then something told me to just you know, start to give it away for free because I, I like, you know, it was so new to me even like I, I understood when I looked at sound healing, I understood it because I knew the principles of sound and resonance and from doing music. Right, yeah. Right. And then I would like, like, so I saw the sound healing and I was like, oh, I could instantly connect dots 
And so I started putting it together and, and then I just started giving it away for free and people were like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. Do you know what you just gave me? Yeah, they're like, and like, I kind of was like, I don't know, like, you what did, know. What did it do? Yeah, I'm like, what happened? Tell you me know? about it. Yeah. Let me, let me so, do a case study. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that kind of evolved into everybody just going like, I want to help you. Like, so I had a copywriter and then someone's like, I'm going to connect you with this person. And, and like, literally, like, I, the pieces I, just came together. Yeah, it was just like a waterfall. I couldn't even stop it if I wanted. I'm like, okay, like, so it was just cool. So it's been very guided in this like transformational process and that's that's kind of how it's and, and i want to interrupt you right here because you sure. said something that was quite profound that that i really want to drive home to my audience mm -hmm. and that is this idea of you always had this knowing sure. you always had in the back of your mind as, as amazing as it was to live mm -hmm. a fast life and hang out with all these really cool people and you know ha really have financial success mm -hmm. extreme financial success and security there was still this yearning inside of you. Right. And I always talk about, I often talk about people's connection to God, to source, whatever name, the, the divine, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, it's, it's, it's God. Um, and this, this innate ability to detect that of which God wants us to do as our life path here on, 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 on earth. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you were able to literally, at the drop of a dime, when it was like, okay, it's time. You know you're good at this. I need you to do something else. You listened. Right. You listened. And that was awfully risky because a lot of us have to get kind of tapped and tapped and tapped. I was one of those people. I got sure. tapped a lot of times and I kept going, I, 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 but, I wanted, but it'll be easier to do this. Right. And in fact, it wasn't easier. <laughs> it actually was pretty difficult mm -hmm. um, to, to go my route. So I love the fact in your story early on, you knew this, you acknowledged it, and when it was time, you turned around and you said, sure, I'm, I'm willing to do what it is that's my job in, in this life, in this carnation. Mm -hmm. So beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so you, you had studied all of the, the science behind sound. Mm -hmm. You had studied how frequencies and sounds affect the body because sound healing is huge. Sure. Um, I've done an episode on sound healing and, and how you can use it. I mean, from anything from healing broken bones, I mean, speeding up the time right, from just right. frequency. And it makes sense because we're nothing but energy bodies. Um, but I want to talk about these beats because sure. I've experienced your beats and I've mm -hmm. had some pretty profound experiences with your beats. I wasn't ready for that. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I mean, <laughs> sorry. sorry, not sorry. Right. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I, I knew it would be an, an amazing opportunity. I mm -hmm. knew it would be something certainly that I would have in my toolbox for meditation because mm -hmm. I'm huge about prayer and I'm huge about meditation. I feel like that's, that's what keeps you grounded. That's what keeps you focused on your, on the right path. Mm -hmm. But these beats are pretty amazing. Um, I want to talk about what these beats are, first of all, in a, in a very um, basic level, because this is a sure. lot of science behind it. Right. I mean, so let's just talk about it on baseline. What are the beats? Because this is what we call them the beats, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's sound alchemy sure. in essence, but, mm -hmm. but the beats is, is these, are, these are beats that, that I had created for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let you talk about it. I'm not sure. going to talk about it. I'm so excited about it. I'm taking over you telling me about the beats. <laughs> but um, let's start off with what are these beats? Okay, cool. So basically, it's, it's uh, a lot of people are familiar with binaural beats. So it's a derivative of that, but then I've added other stuff. So I guess we'll first start with the explanation of binaural beats. That, that was essentially created in the like mid 1800s by a Prussian physicist. And it's, it's, but it goes back even further where, you know, the ancients knew that different rhythmic chanting Tibetan bells, right. um, uh, different instruments would create different states. So essentially, you know, like a low chanting, humming, Tibetan bells ringing, this oscillation would entrain the brain into different states. So, so we have, you know, different brainwave states. So you have the delta, you have theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. And so it's a different array of, you know, very like, like delta is a very deep sleep. And then Theta um, is like a very deep meditation, like almost like a hypnosis trance-like right. state. Um, and then the alpha is, it's still relaxed, but it's, it's not as deep. And then uh, the beta is kind of like a pretty focus. Like it's kind of where like a lot of our analytical, like the, you know, the, the crazy mind, I like to call it, is like, mm -hmm. you're thinking all these different thoughts. And then gamma is like super hyper and focus and really, you know, high cognitive focus on basically what you're doing. And it's also a super consciousness too, where it's, it's interesting that the Delta state 
um, is a state where you can get like amazing awareness and download, but you're like almost, uh, you're asleep or like almost asleep essentially. Whereas the gamma state, you can get the same awarenesses, but you're in like a super, you know, heightened focused state. So it's, it's interesting. It's, it's very, it's very interesting. So, so knowing that the different beats are then created, like binaural beats are created to put one into that state. So it's like an assisted meditational, you know, guide to help you get into the state faster, essentially. And the way it works is super interesting. So going back to when this, uh, the Prussian physicist discovered it, what he discovered was when you take uh, one frequency and one, e like, so when you think of mono or stereo with, with sound equipment, stereo is left and right. Right. So we have the ability to mix left and right. So you put, like, let's say you put 100 hertz in one left ear and then 105 in the other. You hear that, you hear the two frequencies, but your brain interprets a third tone. So the third tone is the, is the difference between the two. So if you have 105 in here, then 100 in the left ear. It's space in between. Yeah, and so it's five hertz. Right. So, so that difference between the two will then dictate what what brainwave state that it's going to entrain your brain to. So that's kind of the basis of binaural beats. And the most, simple version. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Which is still pretty complex, right? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. So, but, and most people don't even know that. So like that's, that's kind of, that's what binaural beats do. So like if you were to just go and buy one, you would get something like that. And most people don't even know what they're getting. So then what I did is I was like, all right, that's cool. But now I want to add in custom frequencies because what I did is, is in my personal development training, I learned that we store a lot of our negative emotions in our body parts. So doing research on um, Royal Raymond Rife, I learned that there's like each body part has a frequency. So I know the emotions that are tied to that frequency. So when someone fills out our, our uh, product uh, questionnaire, when they purchase it, they allude to the different things that they're going through, what they're struggling with. So I correlate that with like, okay, this is associated with this body part. So not only do they get the meditative binaural beat state, but then they're also able to work on what's happening for them specific. So it's like custom tailored, custom made right. to that person. It's kind of like so what your doctor does. When you say, um, I'm having a pain in my stomach, you might just be talking about your abdomen, but they know, oh, this is your gallbladder, this is your appendix, Absolutely, like you're using yeah. the knowledge that you have right. to really give a person a prescription of sound. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Right. Okay. So one of the questions I have about the beats is that, of course, they're customized for whatever it is that I want to focus on mm -hmm. in my meditation. Mm -hmm. Now, after I've passed through that period and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of elevated and I'm okay with that issue and I've mm -hmm. worked through it, are my beats still good? Or do I need to find a new beat? Or how, how does that work? Yeah, so a couple of things. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're still good. I mean, I think most most of the people the things that they're going through like it's typically has some sort of relevance like currently at that time and then typically those areas are things that will not hurt you or it'll still be beneficial i think yeah definitely if, if you've gone through and passed through it it would be cool to like re-up and kind of you know if, if you've like oh i wanted to create success and you have a ton of success with money that's great it's still continue to use it because it's getting you in that state um, and then if there's other things that arise, obviously, as you go through levels, then yeah, I would just absolutely like work on getting a new one and getting something else that makes sense. And, and, and that, that was point. gonna be my next question. Can I buy beats to work with at the same time that are working with various issues or do I work with one beat at a time, reach a certain level and then go to a different beat for a different issue? You know, yeah, you can, you can use them at any time. And really, I, I'm a really proponent on having the person really experience them and feel them for themselves. Cause you know, what we make and what we create, people have so many different experiences with them. So I don't think that there's any like right or wrong way. Like you could use them more or less, or, you know, at certain times, it's really kind of learning to pay attention to what is most useful and beneficial for you. And how long does it take the brain to, how long does it take to train the brain to use these beats or is it instantaneous with the first listen? That's a great question. Yeah, you basically, will can instantaneously put yourself into like a different brainwave state because all it's doing really is on the scans and stuff that that we've looked at if someone comes in and they're really stressed out their brainwave patterns are like really scattered and so we can put anyone you know using listening to the beats and it automatically will start to change their brainwave states within five minutes so 
In terms of the entraining, like long-term effects, it's just kind of like, you know, I mean, people are using them to meditate, right? So if, if you're meditating over a long period of time, like you've been meditating for a year every day or twice a day or something, then yeah, you're going to be able to go into those states a lot faster, sure. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, what's the difference between digitally synthesized sounds and say my Tibetan singing bowls? Because that's sure. something that, that I often hear people that love the uh, instruments, and this is funny because this is actually a part of the story that you just told sure. us about yourself. Um, you know, you have proponents that say, no, I only want an instrument. And then right. other people say, wow, when you got a synthesizer. So, so let's answer that for me. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, I love this question. Um, kind of a long explanation, but if you look at the different like Tibetan bells, for instance, like when we talked about binaural beats and how one ear is tuned to a certain frequency, the other one, that's the same thing with like Tibetan bells. Like one of them is tuned to a frequency and one of them is a little bit off. So it creates that ringing. So essentially the binaural beats are an emulation of that. Um, why use one or the other? Obviously, if you could take, you know, a bunch of Tibetan bells and like singing bowls and like, you know, carry them everywhere because each one is tuned to a certain frequency. Right. So this gives you the ability to have, you know, loads of frequencies like in your cell phone. My 40 bells walking around. Exactly. Yeah. Bells. Like you can't go to the airport and like, oh, I'm just chilling <laughs> no. with my Tibetan bells, you know, no big deal. <laughs> no, airport security yeah. would have some issues probably. <laughs> totally. So there's that. And then also just because I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's like a digital thing. It's bad. The thing to look at is that just in music in general, like we listen to music where it's been played on a keyboard and there's like music all the time, like trance music, meditation music, it's done with a keyboard or real instruments. And people feel this state where they're like, wow, like I feel moved. And the reason why is because um, sound that comes out of speakers, it's literally moving air. And so it moves your eardrum. So when someone says like, wow, that song really moved me, it's because it's, it's literally moving your eardrum. So every time you play a note or a chord on the piano, their frequency. So all we're doing is basically isolating those frequencies and putting them into a rhythmic pattern for someone to listen to. So it's, it's, you know, it, it's not so much different than you listening to, you know, a song or something like that. Right. Now, as I told my audience before, I, I actually, uh, have beats that I work with. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, you know, I, I filled out the questionnaire and I thought instantaneously I knew exactly what I wanted to mm. work with, right? Because I'm all into my meditation and, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very serious about this stuff. Sure. And so I sent you what I thought I actually wanted to work with and I knew exactly what mm -hmm. it was. And what I actually ended up finding out was that it moved me to work in other areas of my mm. life beyond that of which the beat was created. So what I'm saying is, is so if I were working on success, for, for mm -hmm. example, what I actually found is that the success may actually start giving me ideas um, of, of things that are still related to success, mm -hmm. but it was for about maybe um, personal knowledge, personal information. Mm. So it gave me more of a yearning of wanting to educate myself more, mm -hmm. which in terms would help me in success. But it didn't, it didn't happen in the way in which I was expecting. I was sure. expecting it to be like, oh, I'm just gonna come up with this amazing successful idea. Mm -hmm. But in fact, what I found my deficit, as I saw it was, I needed to do something in, in a particular area with education. Sure. And so I wanted to, add that up a little bit and I feel like in terms it was going to make me a more successful person. One of the things that I noticed with my beats is that I use them differently mm -hmm. according to what's going on in my day. So I have several times throughout the day that I meditate. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's once a day, sometimes it can be three times a day. Mm -hmm. I may decide to work with the exact same beat and listen to it maybe two or three times because I want my meditation session to be a little bit longer than the beat. Mm -hmm. Or I may decide to use multiple beats at one time. So it's just really, I love the fact that I can use it however I'm mm -hmm. led to use it. And it's just listening to my own inner wisdom. So that's beautiful. I love that. All right. So, I, you know, I love your beats. I think these are amazing. They have certainly taken my meditative practice to a far greater state than I ever anticipated. So if other people want to purchase this product, how can we find, how can they find this out? How can they get their own set of beats? Okay. First off, thank you so much. I'm so glad it was so amazing for you. Uh, the way they find them is uh, they go to beatsalchemy.com. Okay. And uh, we have a couple of other products on there too. And right now we're actually doing um, uh, like a discounted rate like a special price until we raise the price. And they're called, it's called binaural alchemy, essentially. So they would go there, purchase it and fill out what's going on for them currently. And we, we do three customized beats. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. 
So what we'll do is we'll put all of your information on our website and you can find that at uh, fengshui-it.com. You'll find all of this contact information so that you too can get a copy of your beats for your meditation. All right. Well, thank you again for thank coming you. today and I look forward to working with you in the future.